I'm Scott Allen Miller. It is the 19th of December, 2023. This is my vlog of daily life living in Nicaragua. Today I'm still in the car. I'm heading out to Managua to do some shopping for Christmas because you get this show on a seven day delay. So I still got things being recorded from before Christmas. I hope everyone had a nice holiday yesterday. As I'm driving, I just got flashed that there is a police checkpoint coming up right in front of me. So I am keeping an eye out for that, not driving too fast, making sure that I'm ready for that. Today, we're going to be talking more about real estate and, and why some people have gotten this impression that it is normal to use a buyer's agent when looking for a house. This just came up in the comments as I was driving, actually. And it gave me a great idea uh, for a topic to talk about because it's an important thing. Why do we feel like it is normal to do this? Why do we get that impression? And this plays into a couple uh, topics that we've had recently and is important to understand for everybody who may be looking at real estate so or just are generally interested. So we're going to get to that right after the bump. the police checkpoint right this second mostly you just slow down they've got cones up in the middle of the road i can't show it to you as i go through because i i don't have too many cameras all over the place now they just wave somebody over but it wasn't me no no i just get to drive right through no interaction for you so it came up in my uh comments today and you guys know that i love getting comments and questions and all that so if you have any questions or any comments or ideas for the show or whatever just go down into the comments if you're on a tv that really doesn't work but if you're on your phone or especially if you're on a computer just scroll down and you can ask questions in the show notes and then i can respond to you there for simple questions but really what we're hoping for is content for the show so the question was asked or, or the comment i guess was made uh well let's back up though i made a comment uh in one of the the short videos about uh, gringo pricing we had that just a few days ago talking about how do you avoid gringo pricing and one of the really important things is is not to use a buyer's agent for real estate uh and and then there was a comment um is it are you at risk even if you use a real estate agent and uh, a trusted lawyer and of course you, you should always be using a trusted lawyer. That should more or less go without saying, but I understand that a lot of other things can be like, well, that's not what I was expecting, so maybe that's not what I'm expecting either. Legitimate, I get it. Yes, a trusted lawyer always, it's probably the most important thing that you will find living in any other country, but Nicaragua especially, because laws and so many things work differently than in the US, having a legal advisor that you feel comfortable, you have a good relationship with, and you trust them, um, that you can call them and just ask them things, right? Like, oh, I'm thinking about doing this. Is that okay? Right? And there's a lot of times where we find out all kinds of things that aren't okay that we would assume is just completely normal. Um, and of course, we do a lot of business here. So mostly it's business things that we're finding that out. Like, oh, we would, like the way you form a corporation. Oh, well, in the US, I would totally just do this. And here it's like, no, 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 that's not legal here. And you're like, oh. And then, but this, the reason that you do it in the US is because it protects against this other thing. That other thing isn't legal here either. So you don't need to do that to protect against it. Oh, okay, that makes sense, right? So there's like all these things you need to know. There's just so many subtle things are different uh but so you really need a legal advisor and if you're going to for example buy real estate you absolutely need a lawyer to make sure your contracts are good to clear the titles and all that stuff that's necessary you're not going to get away from that no matter what you do of course legally you're allowed to do it without a lawyer i don't know of any process that requires a lawyer by law but it would be absurd to try to do that it would just be nonsensical you would be at so much risk and there's so many things that you don't have the right access to that you don't have the knowledge of that you don't have the experience in even if you've been a non-lawyer in nicaragua for 10 or 20 years you would still definitely need a lawyer to be sure that you're crossing all your t's dotting all your i's that stuff uh even if you were a lawyer from somewhere else everything's different here uh which a lawyer would know so so yes you absolutely need a trusted lawyer but what you, the problem is, is the, the buyer's agent for the real estate. Having a trusted lawyer 
to go to the question, would do a lot to protect against the worst potential risks of having a real estate agent. The, the worst risks are, for example, being completely scammed, being sold something that doesn't exist, uh, being sold something that's in the, a different location than it really is, being sold something where the title isn't clear, being sold something but uh, the title ends up not being transferred to you and they actually keep it or someone else keeps it. They're the big things where you might lose your entire life savings your lawyer is probably going to protect against those things because they can catch them before the transaction completes. But there are other things they will not be able to protect against, such as uh, the real estate agent potentially selling you a property that doesn't make sense for you, convincing you to buy something that's much more expensive than you need, or talking you into paying double or triple as much as a property is really worth. Those kinds of things they won't be able to protect you against because as a lawyer, they won't be in that portion of the interaction. It'll be too late. And that's where it's important to understand that uh, real estate agents represent one of your greatest risks of gringo pricing and some of your greatest risks of being scammed in general because there are no checks and balances with them because there is no oversight and again we've talked about this in other videos they're supposed to be in the future but currently that oversight doesn't exist uh, and so they it is the wild west it is it is the same as hiring any random person off the street because there's no guarantee they have any experience there's no guarantee they have any training whatsoever so literally any person Nicaraguan or otherwise right you who are watching my video right now you could fly into Nicaragua step off the plane and start telling people having never been in Nicaragua before you could be in the airport just going out getting your first breath of Nicaraguan air and when someone says hey uh, you know nice to meet you what do you do you can say I'm a Nicaraguan real estate agent would you like to buy a house and you can go through that process and try to make money off of them. And it's their job to know there's no such thing as a real estate agent here, that that's not a real thing or that it's a meaningless thing and that you're not able to offer them any value. You know less than they do in most cases. Uh, so it doesn't imply anything. It doesn't imply any amount of experience. It doesn't require any amount of specific ethics or uh, representing your interest or uh, having access to resources or anything of the sort. None of that is implied. In the United States and Canada, many of those things are implied. Maybe you get a bad real estate agent, but the code of ethics does specify what they're supposed to be doing at the very least. And there are laws that govern what they can do. And they do have resources that you don't have. And they do have training that you probably don't have. Of course, you could have it, but it would be weird, right? But at least they have that training and quite a bit of it. All those things um, are, are implied by saying you're a real estate agent. Um, now, it, even in the United States, there's a little bit of gray area on that, but for the most part, you have quite a bit of protection. Here, there is none because there's no such thing as an official real estate agent, so there's no implication of any specific level of anything within that category. So that's the, the first piece, that they're just not held to anything, they're not registered anywhere currently. And so uh, the, the question was, even with a real estate agent, you'd be at risk? And it really should be especially with a real estate agent, you would be at risk. This is the riskiest of the things you would do. In, in normal behavior here, the number one riskiest thing that we see people do is reaching out to or responding to buyer's agents who are trying to convince someone to use them for the process of, of buying a home. And it's just a very dangerous process for so many reasons. You can see my other videos that break it down, why it financially doesn't make sense, why from a resource perspective it doesn't make sense, why from a conflict of interest perspective it doesn't make sense. All those things are just general business that people often overlook because they're not thinking about it. They're not used to thinking about conflict of interest in contractual agreements. And again, if you're coming from the United States, there's tons and tons of laws that give you some amount of protection and there are monopolies and really what under any normal circumstances would qualify as racketeering that create a situation where you have no choice. And so it doesn't matter what your opinion is. It doesn't matter what's good business. You don't have choices because the United States doesn't have the consumer protections that it should and allows monopolies to control access to the market. Although that is 
being looked at heavily now in the U.S. And it's important to note in a, a historical t context or a, a current events context, uh, the state of Missouri just won a massive, massive settlement against Keller Williams for defrauding customers and manipulating the market, uh, acting as an inappropriate monopoly. And Century 20, 21 and their group um, voluntarily submitted to uh, changes and fines out of court so that they would not have to be found or risk being found guilty of the same thing. Um, and so we don't know exactly what they admitted. They don't have anything on the books, but they settled for a great deal of money uh, as well. And so we know that these agencies in the United States, and now they're beginning to look at them and their uh, nonprofit arm, the, the uh, National Association of Realtors, uh, as monopolies and as potentially racketeering and as uh, this group defrauding the American public and manipulating the real estate market and inflating the market, and creating the bubbles and all these problems in the U.S. Uh, so they've in some states been found guilty and in others being investigated. This is a really big deal. So it's important to recognize that if someone is associated with these types of businesses, that should instantly set off red flags. These are organizations that you should never be voluntarily working with. Again, in the US, you have no choice. They control access to the majority of the housing market. So you're trapped. But when you're outside the United States, you should be looking at these things as important red flags. If there's an American, especially any would be a, a red flag to begin with, but basically all real estate arms internationally are US-based companies and all ones that are associated with uh, these groups that have been found guilty of fraud. And so if you were to find anyone who was willing to be tied to them, that alone should, oh my gosh, you should run away. Right? These are people who are openly, basically bragging about being part of an organization that openly defrauds their customers. So it's odd that so many expats come to places like Nicaragua, and we saw a lot of this in Bolivia as well. They come down and they say, oh, but I trust them because, and then they say that because they're a member of an organization that is known for exactly the thing we're warning you about. And that's a really weird reaction. To make things worse, I know that um, uh, Keller Williams has a legal investigation against the Keller Williams branch in Nicaragua um, that uh, we don't know the results of it but because they don't disclose that. But internally, they were investigating them uh, for potentially misrepresenting them, even as Keller Williams, they had concerns about what Nicaragua was doing. Um, and, and they wouldn't vouch for the office. Uh, and the National Association of Realtors disavowed uh, the offices here completely, um, that they don't have international representation, uh, even though people internationally use them as a point of reference. So those are things to watch out for. If anyone, you know, any of those types of organizations, including realtors, especially realtors, you want to be like, oh my gosh, this is a mark of something you definitely want to avoid. You would have your best likely results with um, an agency that was based, now I wanna be really clear, someone is going to misinterpret what I'm saying as, oh, there's a situation where I can talk to a realtor about there's, if you say that, you have not listened to one thing I've said. There is no exception to this. Everyone thinks there's an exception. There is no exception. And as I always say, the more you think you found the exception, the more you have found the rule. And I have never found an exception to that. They must exist, but I've never found it which brings up the thing that came today. But if there was going to be a less bad, not good, just less bad scenario, it would be a non-realtor. For those who don't know, realtors are not real estate agents. They are members of a private organization that withholds information from the public in order to extort them for higher funds. So you always wanna watch out for people registered as realtors, uh, which is a made up word. Uh, because that is a trademarked word for people who are members of this hostile organization. As someone buying or selling a house, these are a group you definitely want to stay away from. Go read up anything about them. It's like, oh, they only are able to operate in the U.S. because they literally own access to the multi-listing service. There's no way for you to function unless you pay into their organization. So in the U.S., their members are not voluntary, not in any realistic way. But here, they're
They're completely voluntary and they exist only for the purpose of tricking expats, gringos, who think because it means one thing in the US that it means the same thing here and they're not thinking through why it means that in the US. And so it's a way to, uh, it makes it more obvious what bad thing they're trying to do in a way where if you're not thinking critically, you're more likely to fall for what it is they're tricking you with. So, so watch out for that. Watch out for those things. But you would, so you don't want a realtor and you don't want an agency that's associated with a North American real estate broker because they offer nothing to this market, right? They're not bringing expertise. They're not bringing access to resources. They're not bringing ethics. They're not bringing uh, um, reputation because they are famous for their bad ethics and bad reputations in North America, not just at a customer service level, but at a legal level now with the things that have happened in Missouri and the investigations going on federally and just the things that have been exposed and just common sense. So watch out for those things. Those would make it worse. It doesn't change it. Okay. So that brings us to today's actual topic, which was the statement. And this goes to my, don't even look at videos online about real estate. So in the viewer comment, she said, uh, I thought, you know, from having seen so many videos, sorry about the glare, uh, about real estate, I had the feeling that it was still normal to use a buyer's agent uh, there in Nicaragua for looking at property. And, and there's a couple things here that are really important. One is that it has never been normal. That is not an impression you should have. However, of course, real estate agents make their money, and this is the second point, not by convincing you to buy a house, but by convincing you that using a real estate agent and paying them to work with you while finding a house is sensible and normal and something you should do. That's where they're really selling you on something. That's where there's something weird. It's not that buying a house is strange. Of course, lots of people want to buy a house. I have to pass some traffic while I'm talking. Um, but what, what real estate agents do, first, they're salespeople. They're always salespeople. And that's something that you have to really realize because it's really important. We act like they're not salespeople. We act like they're like they're investment advisors, home investment advisors, and that is not at all what they are. And we know that for a few reasons, but the first thing is that they're salespeople. And the first thing that they sell you is the concept of hiring them, the concept of using a buyer's agent. Because logically a buyer's agent makes no sense. If you weren't being sold this through lots of channels and through custom, if you just logically sat down and said, I want to buy prop, I want to buy something big and expensive, how would I go about doing it? Then the concept of a buyer's agent paid a commission based on how much they can sell you is the last thing that would cross your mind. It makes no sense at all. So you would never come to that on your own. The second part is once they've convinced you to work with them, is then they're salespeople for the houses. And that's exactly what you're thinking that you're paying them not to do. What you want is someone who's going to find houses for you, yes, show them to you, sure, but why do you need someone to show you houses? That's a weird need, right? Like, I can look at a house without someone showing it to me. Uh, I know what I'm looking for. I know what I want. I know when I like something. I'm the one who wants to buy it, right? What are they going to add to the equation? Very, very little. And then they're going to so you think that this is, but you want them to go, well, here's the problems. Here's what's wrong with this neighborhood. Here's the lack of this. He, oh, the roof is bad. Did you see that? You want them to be the naysayer, to talk you out of it, show you all the things you might have missed, to think about the things, because you might get caught up with the excitement of buying a house. You want them to be like, whoa, whoa, I'm not emotionally tied to this because it's not my house. So I can see all the flaws and point them out to you. And I know things that you don't know, like this neighborhood has expensive electric or has problems with water or has a high crime rate, right? Things that you may not notice, they're there to point them out, you think. But you're paying them a commission based on, one, they only get paid under normal circumstances if they talk you into a house. So the first thing is you're paying them to look the other way on all issues and you're paying them a lot to do that, right? You're tying their incentive to, they had better talk you into a house or they're not gonna get paid at all. Then, because it's commission-based, you're also tying them to, 
selling you on as much of a house as possible. Both, you will pay them extra if they talk you into a larger, fancier, more expensive house. And you will pay them extra if they talk you out of good negotiations with the seller. Maybe the seller would have sold for 200,000, but maybe you'll buy for 300,000. Well, you pay your buyer's agent based on how much they can talk your price up, not talk the other ones down. And so they are compensated to screw you over by talking you into paying them in the first place, paying you to buy a house that you might not have bought otherwise, and then convincing you to get the largest, most expensive house you can possibly get, and then overpaying for it by the maximum amount you can handle. Four standard ways under an appropriate engagement. That is how bad it is when a real estate agent acts as much in your interest as they can while honoring your incentives, right? Your incentives. You're the one deciding that that is how you will pay them. So given that you are essentially demanding that they do these four things based on the contract, if they do those things, that is the best they can do. If they, the risk is that they then do things on top of that to be even worse, but the things on top of that are arguably illegal, but they still happen quite often. But ignoring anything illegal, this is the behavior that makes the concept so wildly inappropriate. So incredibly, obviously not something you should choose to engage with. And yet we all feel like it's normal because so much sales, so much marketing has gone into making us feel like this is a normal engagement, a normal way to approach things. But if you were a business person and someone came to you and said, here's how our business is going to work. Uh, we're gonna be your business partner. We only get paid when we completely screw you over and don't look after your interest whatsoever and we add zero value to the system. In fact, we get in the way of you doing good business and screw you over on top. No business person would be like, yes, let's do that. That's fantastic, right? That's not a good thing. That's not what you want. Uh, I got a, This is my fifth police checkpoint of the day that I'm driving through right now. Um, it's horrible. It's a horrible interaction. Yet for real estate, North Americans have been conditioned to believe that this is kind of normal. So that is that is why that works out that way. We've talked about that on a lot of videos, but that feeling of, oh, I thought this used to be normal. No, no, no. Real estate agents are essentially a new concept in Nicaragua, and that's why they're a challenge and unregulated. And mostly, not 100%, but mostly they came about during the, the boom years, 2015 to 2017, when Nicaragua was exploding. Suddenly they had been a, a tourism backwater for a very long time. And there was very few expats here. And then all of a sudden around 2014, 2015, the market just congealed, it exploded. People were moving in like crazy. Real estate was moving really fast. It was just growing and growing and growing. And uh, so I lived here in 2015, so we saw some of it. But by 2017, it was, it was insane. It felt like Costa Rica. And people, there was, everyone was in a land rush to buy anything they could. And so people moved here to be real estate agents because there was so much money to be made. And you could inflate things by 100, 200, 300%. And foreign people would often buy without even coming and looking. They would buy places that they never got the deed for. They would buy places that they would never come check on things. And they would never hire a lawyer. They would never have a local agent. They would just find a real estate agent, assume somehow that protected them. They would just throw money at it and hope for the best. And it became famous for all these people who got duped and lost fortunes. Some of them just bought property that wasn't very valuable and overpaid for it. But many ended up buying nothing or buying practically nothing or something very different than what they paid for and getting really, really taken advantage of. Now, some of that's improved because that land rush is gone. In 2018, the market collapsed. And so now we don't have that insane rush and no one's buying anything. But most of the real estate agencies and agents and processes and thought and, and appearance and market appeared during that very short window. And most of it then disappeared afterwards. But those that are here mostly are lingering on from that time. And so uh, it's not an old 
thing at all and it was never normal nicaraguans have never done it that way here uh it is always the exception um to to how processes are and i've i've really never met a nicaraguan who went and looked for property that way they the whole thing exists only for expats who haven't done their research in the market and so there's always going to be that stuff there's always going to be someone who knows that there's a foreigner who uh, thinks they can short circuit taking the time to get to know a local market and they will prey on that that's it's a that's a huge market worldwide not going to go away um, but we can warn our audience about it tell you how to think about and approach those things universally and then you'll be aware of how to think about it and how to protect yourself and and not fall for those things now someone made the comment well of course when you watch these real estate videos the purpose of these videos is to make you feel like this is the process so if you've been watching them you've been conditioning yourself that that this is normal and they have to present it that way because if they came out and said this is a new thing we're trying and we make no sense and you're paying us to screw you over right you'd say oh my gosh that is crazy why would i do that they can't let people know that right so the the whole existence um and, and there are people who just demand to work with real estate agents no matter how much they know it doesn't make sense they just demand to they want to they like that that's how things can work and so uh there's always going to be someone who offers what people want uh, and so that is, um, that is the process, uh, for that. I'm trying to check my map, make sure I'm going to the right place. So <clears throat> the other part, so we talked about this in a recent video, and this is an example of the thing I was talking about and, and in the video, which was the things not to do. So it was about two, maybe three weeks ago. And the one where a lot of people were like, okay, great. Here's what's not to do. But what do you do is that's why we came up with the follow-up video, but in the what not to do video. One of the things that we talked about is do not watch real estate videos for a lot of reasons. But the important one is that you condition yourself to believe the things in the videos. And you can tell yourself as much as you want that, okay, this doesn't make sense. The numbers are false, whatever. But the information is, and I don't want to say it's lies, but it is unknown truth. So you have no reason to believe anything in the videos. There's no reason to believe that the price you're being told is reasonable. It may be the, the real asking price, but it does not imply that that is what it should sell for. And there's no reason to believe that the information about the property is correct. In many cases, we know that there are many videos out there. I'm not saying any particular channel, but there are channels showing properties and there are websites listing properties that do not exist that are nothing like they're describing, that are in a different location, that are a different price, that exist but are not for sale, any number of things that are different than what you expect. And what that does by watching those on the property side is it establishes a pattern in your mind of whatever prices they show you. So if they show you house after house after house, it's 300,000. No matter how much you tell yourself that the number is fake, your brain will start to accept 300 as a ballpark number. It may never accept 300 as an actual good number to spend, but it will make you start thinking that 200 or 250,000 isn't so bad because it's so much less than 300. But what is the problem is what if those houses are only worth 85? Suddenly you're seeing this 300 and you're telling yourself, I know it's not really 300, but it's making it that you will, no matter how much you say you'll protect yourself from this, your brain can't do that. So this is one of those ways we lie to ourselves about how we can be emotionally manipulated by ourselves. And your brain will start to accept higher and higher numbers as being reasonable, no matter how logically they may not be. And the problem is, is that you have nothing to anchor you. You don't know that the house is only 85,000. You just wonder if maybe it is, but the more you see people, especially different people saying that 300 is a reasonable number, the more you will start to accept that 150 or 200 or 250 is reasonable. And that's where there's a real psychology to how those websites work is that they're not there to sell you a house for 300. They'll be thrilled if that happens, but they're really there to skew your Im impression of what a house should cost so that they can actually get you to only pay double rather than quadruple. Show you quadruple a thousand times and I can sell you on double or triple the number of times I need to. 
right? So very effective. The other thing that they're doing is they're establishing through a number of channels, through a number of websites, that the concept of real estate agents is legitimate. They want you to think that they have lots of properties to show. They want you to think that they're showing you prices. And they want to show you these high prices so that later, when they actually talk to you, they can be like, oh, you saw that one for 300 I know that one's pricey. I bet we can find one like it for 200 And you'd be like, he just saved me $100,000. And what your brain often will skip is that they just tricked you into paying $200,000 for an $85,000 house by showing you a $300,000 house first and making you think that they did savings. It's much like how a sale works. You gotta remember JC Penney's, they would double the price of their clothing, say this is a $20 t-shirt. And then many times a year, they would run a sale and have it for $10 and people would fall for that. And they'd say, but it's half off. You're like, it's not half off. It's just not doubled. Most of the year it's doubled. Once in a while, it's the real price. Is the real price something that's good? The fact that it's half price when it's on sale means absolutely nothing. It is the amount that they artificially inflated it so that they could return it to its actual price. That's hardly something to be even interested in. The fact that it's 50% off means nothing, literally nothing. You could, you could equally raise the price to a million dollars and drop it to, you know, a hundred dollars and say, ah, it's 99.99% off, whatever that math is. And they'll be like, oh my gosh, that's essentially free. No, it's a hundred dollars. It's only worth $2. You're still overpaying by 50 times. They just made a fake and you can make that fake number as high as you want. It's meaningless, but it makes you think crazy things. Now, of course, if you make it a million dollars, people start to go, whoa, that's just a fake number. But the point still stands. It's just an artificial number created to make your brain stop making reasonable connections so they can trick you as to what good pricing is. So it's important <clears throat> to not feed negative information into your brain because as much as we wish we were computers, if you were a, a computer and you, you could write a program and say, uh, okay, don't, um, do, don't take into account any of the prices you see. These are fake. Ignore them and just do other things. A computer can 100% throw away that data and it can uh, not use it in any way whatsoever and not be influenced by it because it has no emotion. But humans aren't like that. And our brains are going to be influenced. That is a guarantee. Some people will be influenced a lot. Some people just a little. But everyone is influenced. I, I would certainly be an influence. You would certainly be influenced. People you know would be influenced. People you don't know. Everyone. It is how the brain works. We cannot completely turn it off. And people know this. And so sales and marketing people use a couple things. One is fake information like this to trick people, they also push the idea that, well, it doesn't hurt to look. What a lie. Of course it hurts to look. It hurts a lot. That's when they get you. That's when they trick you. Getting you to believe it doesn't hurt to look is the beginning of, once they've done that, your brain is already lying to itself because you know emotionally that it does hurt to look. It wastes your time. It wastes your effort. And it feeds you full of bad information. But no one believes that every bit of information they get is bad, but they don't know which parts are good and which parts are bad. And so that makes a, a disconnect in the brain and the brain has to do something and the thing it has to do is definitely negative to you. So it's really important. Do not put garbage into your brain like that. It, it, really, it's a, it's a form of toxicity. Don't feed yourself full of that toxicity. It's not gonna help you. No amount of false information gives you the ability to derive true information, but it does make it harder and harder to drive it at the end. So it does hurt you to look. Very, It's very obvious that it hurts you to look. And people who tell you it doesn't hurt to look, you need to be really wary of what they're trying to sell you. And quite often, it's the looking that they're trying to sell. And that's the, these phrases so often are so easy to say, it doesn't hurt to look. The ends justify the means. We don't really think about what they mean. They sound good. We hear them repeated all the time. If you actually break it down, oh my gosh, the phrase itself is a, is a mechanism for tricking me. Unfortunately, my camera died while I was driving, but I did get a lot recorded on the road. And I think that worked out pretty well. So the bottom line here is really, it's important to understand it has never been the norm to have real estate agents here in Nicaragua or most places. And prior to recent times, even in the in America, it was not something that we had. It just 
It just logically doesn't make sense. The idea of buying something like that, who knows what it is you're going to like? Who knows what you're going to fall in love with? Who know You. And who else? No one else. Why does some other person have access to more information about houses than you do? They shouldn't. If they do, that's a problem. What gives them that information? Someone who lives in that town or nearby may have information about neighborhoods or problems in the town or insight that you don't have, but can you trust someone you're paying to not be incentivized to give you bad information? You have to be really careful about that. Can you gather that information on your own? Yeah, probably. Could you get it from other people in town who are not in that position to take advantage of you very easily? Um, so it's it's all of that, right? You need to really – I think this is – it's such a big thing. It's such a huge amount of our financial resources. It is a rare person for whom a house, a home, uh, does not represent um, a massive amount, if not the majority, of their investments. And so that makes it – an extremely vulnerable moment. And it makes us nervous and it makes us think maybe we need an advisor. And, and you probably should have one. But it should be an advisor, not a salesperson. And, and certainly not someone who's directly incentivized against you, which is how a real estate buyer's agent is. They're, you pay them to hurt you. And there's no way to spin that in any other way, right? Now, they, you may trust that you find one who won't do that, very unlikely, especially in a place where they have no reason to. It's not like in North America where there are laws that kind of force them to try to work in that way. But to think that uh, you could, you, that they're all going to work against their own interest and work against what you're telling them to do and work against what you're paying them to do all to hurt themselves just to help you makes no sense. And if you stop and think about it, if you put yourself in their shoes you, you, and think about it, this is how you put food on the table and you make more money from the, like, just really think about it. it it's a no brainer, right? But we we're taught not to think about it. We're taught not to, uh, you know, evaluate things like that because that's how the economy makes money is by getting people to throw their money away, voluntary taxes or whatever. So uh, understanding that it's never been the norm, it shouldn't be the expectation. You shouldn't want it, all those things. And what you want is good results. And it's unfortunate that you can't just wave a magic wand and, and, and have someone do all the work for you and protect you and you don't have to do any of the legwork. You don't have to worry about anything. Absolutely. I wish that you could. That would be fantastic. But you can't. You have to do due diligence. You have to be involved. You have to work logically. You have to protect yourself against the scams. Um, and, and not that all real estate agents are out there to scam you, but they're all in a conflict of interest. They have to be. Uh, buyer's agents. Seller's agents are a different thing. We don't talk about them. But when we're talking about buyer's agents, you may find one who wants to be good. I haven't found them outside the United States. And even there, right, who knows? But in uh, in in other markets, right, uh, the chances that you're going to find one that are so, so, so unlikely. And the, the idea that they would work against their own interest, that, that they have a conflict of interest, that they're willing to work in this commission mode, all of those things are something wrong. And you don't want them. They shouldn't want them. If they were working in your interest, why would they have any of those things? They would have found some other mechanism. There are ways that they could be helping you if that's what they wanted to do. If, if their goal was to help you, they could do so in this arena without this weird commission structure of a buyer's agent. And so uh, think about these things with a critical eye um, and remember that it's not the norm. And remember that basically everything you hear from the real estate agent side is a, uh, is a sales pitch. And remember that it is the expectation. It is the guarantee that every agency, every brokerage, every person you talk to in that system is going to repeat the same stories because they have to. Their entire career, their entire mechanism of earning money is based around the exact same thing, the exact same uh, modality of, of getting money in this conflict of interest mode. And so for them to have their jobs, for them to function, for them to have the protection of each other, for the whole, the whole ecosystem depends on them all having a consistent story and approach and convincing you that, that something so incredibly obviously illogical and against your interest is inevitable is acceptable, is normal, all those things. It is not. So here, don't be surprised. 
that uh, that there is this mechanism for taking advantage of you because there's just so much money in it. There's going to be. It actually, if you stop and think about it, wow, yeah, no, there would be things to take advantage of immigrants in a country. Boy, I sure hope that doesn't happen in, oh, it does happen in my country. It doesn't matter what country you're from. There is someone taking advantage of people who are immigrating. And that's what expats are, right? We're immigrants who don't have the knowledge of the market. We don't have the resources. We may have more money than a lot of people, not, certainly not all, but we have more money than maybe the average. And that may make it feel like we're in a special case. And that's why we say expat instead of immigrant, right? But we're immigrants just the same. And immigrants are always a target in every market because they don't know what their resources are. They don't know who to run to. They don't know what normal is. They don't know what bad looks like. They don't know what resources are there to protect them. They don't know who to reach out to. They're a very vulnerable group and a very unprotected group, which kind of goes together, right? But but it's it's like all the things that target the elderly, right? Why are the elderly always targeted as a group? Because they're really easy on average, to take advantage of, and they tend to have more than the average resources. That's exactly expats, right? They they tend to have a lot of resources. Anyone who's in a position of moving to another country has a certain number of resources. And anyone who's new to a country is almost certainly at a massive disadvantage compared to the normal market. So your expectation in stepping into the expat role is that you are going to be an obvious target for scams. And so you need to be on the lookout for them and be very careful of what you allow salespeople. And first, be very diligent about identifying salespeople. How are people making money off of whatever they're doing with you? Uh, and and then recognizing, okay, this was a sales pitch to create this illusion. And, and these things are always bigger than you think. And it does not imply conspiracy, nothing of the sort. It's simply, if you logically look at it, Wow, all the people involved in this industry and many others all have the exact same incentive. They're all going to repeat the same thing because everyone's simply driven by the law, profits, what's easy, what they're used to, what people expect, whatever. They all have the same factors driving them. They're all coming to the same super obvious conclusion naturally. If you stop and think about it, you probably could come up with the same thing and predict the behavior that you're seeing, which I guarantee you can. Uh, so, yes, if you want to protect yourself, run away anywhere, right? Make sure you have lots of market knowledge. We say this so much. Make sure you develop your own market knowledge, put your feet on the ground, and don't let salespeople, the, the amount that I have to say this in businesses, don't let salespeople create your context. Don't let salespeople build everything and take control and be in charge. Don't use salespeople as advisors. They are not your, your friends. Anyone who's in a position of selling you something is not in a position of advising you about that process or that thing. There's nothing wrong with salespeople inherently. You need them for certain things. But you have the, have the responsibility of always knowing who is a salesperson and acting accordingly, meaning taking what they say as a, okay, when they tell me a price, that should be true. When they tell me how long it'll take to get to me, that should be true. When they give me discrete information, that should be true. But when they say, this is good for you, this is the right thing, this is what you should do, this is a good price, this is a bad price, this is a, no, anything that is that is subjective, you can't trust from them and you should never listen to it, right? Only absolutely factual, verifiable, discrete data should ever come from a salesperson. They are not your advisor. They are your anti-advisor. The role of an advisor is only as important as it is to protect you from salespeople. If there were no salespeople, this would be really easy to do a lot of these things on your own. There may be a little bit of disconnect and I don't even know where to start looking. There's, there's reasons why you need an advisor in things. But the biggest reason that you need advisors in most things in life, most big decisions, most purchases, is because of the salespeople themselves. That is who you need to be protected against. Uh, because they're the ones who have the skill, the experience, and the motivation to trick your brain into doing something against your interest. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. And as always, share on social media. Tell your friends about the show. And thank you so much for a wonderful year of, of doing this show. We're in between. We're coming up on New Year's here. And... Uh, it's It's been an amazing 2023 here on the show. I never thought the show was going to be this big and go like this. So a lot of amazing stuff happening. Thanks to all of you. 
and I will see all of you tomorrow.